Welcome back to my channel. As you see here, I'm back uh, in my living room. I haven't shot a video here in a long time. I want to say about six months. Um, I've been shooting most of my recent videos from the doorway of my bathroom because it's just much better lighting. But I did run a poll on my channel on the community tab asking which background, like which aesthetic you guys prefer and the overwhelming majority picked this one. So here I am back in my living room. This video uh, is a little different from my usual content. Um, I don't really watch YouTubers, uh, in particular gay YouTubers. I, I, you know, one of the main reasons I created this channel in the first place, as some of you know, is that I was really disappointed by the content, the gay content I saw on YouTube. I felt like a lot of it was low hanging fruit, meaning like very sort of obvious, stereotypical, sexualized content, like, you know, a video on my favorite sex toys, right? Or like my first time having sex with a guy, like stuff that isn't actually, I mean, I guess some people might find relief in that if they're new to exploring their sexuality um, with other men, but like in general, I feel like it's not, it's not, uh, multi-layered or or intellectual or thoughtful or something that is changing the narrative of this stereotype that 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 we deal with as gay people so for that reason i don't really pay attention to other gay youtubers um, but here and there an interesting video pops up and i saw this video come up on my recommended feed i haven't watched it yet this i'm watching it live for the first time here on video um, and, and I'm going to condense it, of course, um, so that this video is not like an hour long, but it's called Gays and Sissies in Prison. And I guess this guy is talking about his own experience. To me, this is like fascinating gay, LGBT, whatever you want to call it, content. Like, I am very curious what this is going to be about. The video at the time of my video, this video that I'm going to react to is only two weeks old and it's basically gone viral. It has 200K views. By the way, I'm always fascinated by these guys who hop on the internet and make a few videos and they get crazy viewership, crazy engagement. I mean, obviously for a topic like this, this is a very like, uh, very specific theme that only people who have been in prison can talk about, right? So, so I give him credit where it's due, that he's talking about something really uh, interesting, fascinating and unique. But I get kind of bitter that I'm like, how do these people just hop on, they create a few videos, and they fucking go viral, and they have a much bigger audience than me within a matter of weeks. I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm going to react to this video, curious what he has to say, and then tell me in the comments like what your thoughts are on all this, uh, based on the clips that I show, and if you end up watching the full video yourself, I'm going to link to it in the description box and in the comments so you can watch the full video yourself that I'm about to react to. So let's do it. But uh, if you're watching this, you probably know a little bit about my personal life, which is, you know, that I, uh, you know, date trans women, or I've, I've dated two of them. And, and a lot, one of the things I get accused of often is that uh, it goes back to me being in prison or that I did something in prison. It's definitely not how it started. And maybe I, I do plan on making a video about like, all of the fucking horrible response, responses and repercussions I've had to face for uh, dating trans women. Okay, so first off, I'm so fascinated by these topics. So first glance, looking at this guy, he looks to me like a typical gay guy or gay porn star, just with a lot more tattoos. But he has a boyishness that to me looks very like the way a lot of gay guys look in porn. Um, so off the bat, right, my first impression is like, oh, he's into trans women. Is this one of those guys who that's like easier for him to, to dabble in than having sex with guys because there's still, of course, so much stigma. Obviously there's stigma about having sex with trans women too, but I feel, I've always had the assumption that guys who are into trans women, it's kind of like they get to have best of both worlds like they get to play with certain male parts but they get to say that they're with a woman right um but i've learned uh, along the years that that's actually really ignorant and 
for a lot of guys, it's like they specifically are into trans women. Uh, they like the blend or the, the, the sort of in-between sort of features uh, gender-wise that, that there's male features to play with female features. So I've learned that that, that that assumption that I had is actually like incorrect. Um, but so it's just funny seeing him immediately thinking like he kind of looks like a lot of the gay guys in porn, right? Or the gay guys at the gym. Uh, not that I go to the gym, what am I talking about? But it's funny that my, my instinct is like, oh, he's a gay guy, but it's easier, you know, to be with trans women maybe. Um, but again, I have to like check that instinct because I've been taught uh, after meeting people, either trans or, or who have a thing for trans women, that, that, that's not actually the case. Like you can be attracted to women and women's like gentleness and, and um, you know, all the like feminine features and not at all have an attraction to men. But with trans women, you, it's like, you know, like a, like a fetish or like a fascination or something that's just, you don't get with the average woman otherwise. We're now gonna talk about uh, gay people in prison. Um, now there's a little bit of a different semantics here. They will call themselves sissies and everybody else will say sissies because, uh, you know, all this talk like that trans people are like afraid to go to, uh, the men's prisons because all the, uh, you know, the sissies and, you know, the ones who I'm pretty sure identified as women, man, they seem to be like, <laughs> they seem to be all right with being in men's prison. Like they had, you know, dudes chasing them around, giving them food constantly. Like uh, they're kind of living it up in there. Um, and they were, were, were far from being harassed or tormented. You know, they stuck together pretty well. What they tell you though is like, don't harass those sissies or those gay dudes because first of all, a lot of them can fight. And a lot of those those guys, they, they, they're like from Detroit and shit and they walk around the yard, you know, sashaying so it's like you know if you grew up walking like that in east detroit you know you've probably been in a fight or two you know it's it's just considered a very bad idea and there's nothing you gain from it because if you uh if you beat one of them up like nobody's gonna think you're cool it's like beating up uh you know the kid who's like a half a momo in school you know like you know bullying can kind of like impress the crowd to a little bit but not like that you know and and i saw experience of it i saw a firsthand experience of dudes getting beat up by gay guys and it's like one of the worst things that can happen to you talk about talk about being marked a target it's really interesting to hear somebody dispel that uh stereotype right that like as a gay person you don't want to be in jail if you're effeminate you, you know if you have anything remotely submissive about you you don't want to be in jail you'll be taken advantage of you'll be sexually assaulted so it's really interesting i'm sure that still happens he's not denying that happens but it's interesting that he's pointing out like some of those guys or, or, or non-binary or trans uh, inmates are like running the show. If this is the world they come from and they come from a rough area, it's not their first rodeo. Like they've learned to be on defense, which is like the trauma of so many people in jail, right? Not just gay people or LGBT people, that it's like a, they're used to being ready to fight. Um, but it's interesting to hear that somebody getting called a slur, it's like so much of what I've sort of learned about prison culture is that so much is about honor and there's something very like tribal and primitive about the hierarchy in prison, right? So the way that I was raised, I think probably like a lot of people watching this, it's like, just turn the other cheek, don't engage, don't fight. But then there's people who grow up based on the culture, the, the community they grew up in or whatever, they're told like, no, you have to defend your honor. And I think that's what he's kind of referring to. He got suspended for like 30 days or something because he got caught with an inmate in the freezer or something. He didn't get caught in the act. Like, you know, the dude must've got his pants zipped up, but they pretty much knew what was going on. But uh, you know, those guys have a pretty good union. They couldn't fire him. But uh, yeah, he had to come back and it was kind of like a known thing that that's pretty much what he all but got caught doing. Obviously everybody knows about uh, the guys on the down low. There's the joke that, you know, there's these guys you see on the yard that are walking around with a young boy. And then you see them in the visiting room and they got like a beautiful wife visiting them. And uh, I never specifically saw anything like that. I mean, I'm sure that does happen. 
but uh, there's definitely it are like the guys who fuck with them, the sissies on the down low. And there's times when it comes out and, uh, you know, it can be a big scandal, especially if the dude is like, you know, a bit of a player. But what's interesting is uh, if you're if you're enough of a player or more, or more so if you're tough enough, um, people can't really say shit to you like there's the, and, and if you're really a badass, you can kind of just do it openly. That sounds like real life to me. It sounds like prison mimics real life where if you're attractive enough, if you're like alpha enough, people don't tell you what to do. They're too afraid to tell you what to do. Uh, and you get to like call the shots. You, you know, it really shows in there. Um, there's a lot of homophobia, but at the same time, people are like pretty willing to turn the other way. Uh, you, you also like, you, you're around it 24 seven to an extent like that. Even if you are homophobic, eventually you just, it stops, I guess, triggering you so bad. You know, I guess it's like, uh, what is it? The immersion therapy for, for gay stuff. That's really interesting. I never considered that in prison, you're forced to be around people. It's not like, you know, if you're privileged enough to work from home and theoretically you could just stay home all day and never talk to anybody. Like you're forced to be around people, kind of like school, I guess or if you work at an office or a place where you have to be around people who you might not necessarily like. A lot of us, including me, have the luxury of not having that. I work from home. There's something about that socialization of like school or an office or I guess prison. There's something actually really good about you're forced to be around people who you otherwise would never be around. And so you have to adjust and compromise. Like. That's actually, there's something really great about that in retrospect that that prison forces that uh, when it comes to these elements of like, you're going to be around gay people, whether they they identify it as that or not, you're gonna have to become okay with it or at least normalize it, be desensitized to it. And let me tell you, to get a, prison's a pretty gay place. So to, to get the nickname Gay Mike, you gotta be pretty gay. This motherfucker used to sashay across the yard like it was, you know, the Milan fashion fest, you know, <laughs> fucking ridiculous. But uh, I pre if you watch this long, I appreciate you watching. This guy is so charming. I understand why he he's quickly uh, developed an audience. He's giving such a, a specific perspective and, and experience. But oftentimes when people do that, it's like they don't know how to translate to the general audience. He's really good at communicating in like a down to earth way but in a very clear way, right? I like this guy. The takeaway for me is that we always have these assumptions of like, it's kind of actually like my videos in the Middle East. Um, some of you are familiar with those videos. Those are actually still the videos on my channel that get the most views every single day. Uh, years ago, I went to the Middle East. Um, I was playing Nomad. This was in 2019, pre-COVID. I was already kind of uh, working from home playing Nomad. And I still get comments that are like, I can't believe you went to Dubai. It must be so scary to be gay there. I think there's a lot of folklore that people develop that is rooted in negative stereotypes, xenophobia, Islamophobia. In this case, this fear of prison. Obviously prison is not a place you should aspire to go to, but it's funny how fear is, is such like this domineering, emotion that people feel where they, they start to they don't they don't actually know right if you haven't been to prison you don't you don't know what prison is really like yet we all have heard that that running joke of like don't drop the soap and from what he's saying it's actually way more progressive and open-minded um, than you would think slash some of the the gay guys or, or trans people that he's been exposed to in prison are actually like the tougher ones like they they they're scrappy so this is a really interesting um, point of view that he brings up that like, it sounds like prison life, a lot of it mimics real life hierarchy and sociological like elements of, of people. So I, I always think it's good to hear people who really know dispel, dispel that. In the same way that obviously me when I went to Dubai, when I went to Egypt, 
I was there as a, a as a visitor. I was not a local, so it's it's still a biased perspective. But I was like, this is not at all what people would think. Like people would people assume that in these countries, like you know, if if you seem remotely gay, you're gonna get your head chopped off or something. And it's it's just so ignorant because gay people exist everywhere. So in every culture, there's a different sort of language that that like a different dance that gay people do to. To, to, to blend in, to survive, and um, much like what it sounds like he's saying, a lot of it is a don't ask, don't tell culture. Like, people know, the general public knows in every culture, in every country, in every place in the world, people know there's gay people around and there's men who have attraction to men, and women who have attraction to women, but in certain cultures, including, I guess, prison life. Discretion is what can get you through. Curious what you guys think about this video, especially if you end up watching the full video. Um, good for this guy that, that he's finding this like new identity as a, as a content creator. And that's really cool that he can share uh, his experience inside the cell with the rest of the world. Kind of ironic, right? That prison is all about containing and then now he's back in the real world and he's like kind of disseminating through social media his, his stories and experiences. That's pretty, that's pretty gnarly.